So this is the, um, the next Governor Cox Award that we'd like to um, give to somebody. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to struggle through this because if you, I mean, that was amazingly inspirational. This, this next story is one that uh, I've been running through my head um, on how to tell effectively. And, um, and I've, I've got some names and a couple of notes, and I'll try to uh, stumble through this as best I can, but it's going to be difficult. Um, but uh, this is about a, um, an employee of... Um, Cox Media Group, who's been with us for 29 years now, 1989, he became one of our um, reporters. And he's not just any reporter, he's the Washington correspondent um, that many of you may know as uh, Jamie Dupree. Does everybody in here know Jamie? In a, uh, in a crazy world of fake news and um, partisan politics and extremes, um, I've always found, and I'm, a, I'm an editor, a former editor, I've always found that Jamie has the unique ability to cover news, and no matter who he's talking to, no matter how partisan or one side of the line they may be, Jamie has always been able to just report the news and not get dragged into the politics. And um, you can find him uh, talking to the most conservative and the most liberal um, of interviewees, and uh, he always manages to walk that line beautifully. He sticks to facts, he covers the news, and he does a phenomenal job. But the reason we're talking about him today is because we are here because we have a purpose. We, we want to build a better company. We want to be in position to build a better future for the next generation. We have to make decisions. We have to work hard. We have to do things that we don't always plan on doing um, because life throws curveballs your way. And um, how many of you uh, have heard Jamie um, recently on the radio? I thought the same thing. I, asked, I actually talked to my wife about this last night, and I told him we were going to be here, and he said, she said, uh, oh, I just heard him the other, the other day. The fact of the matter is, you've, a lot of people think you've heard Jamie recently. He actually has not been on air for two years. And he, is a, he, he, was, he was brought to Cox Media Group as a radio personality. But two years ago, he was diagnosed with a very, very rare neurological disorder that made him feel like he had laryngitis one day, and it never went away. He lost his voice. And we all thought, I mean, so many of us thought to ourselves, that just can't be. I mean, uh, Jamie is, you know, he, he's on the air daily, multiple times. I mean, and we thought, well, sur surely we'll um, get him fixed up with a, a great doctor, a great hospital, and they'll, um, they'll be able to fix that. We have a great relationship with Cleveland Clinic. He went to Cleveland Clinic, and they told him there is nobody who has an answer to this, um, this problem. Uh, he's been to Johns Hopkins, he's been to Emory. There are a few other people out there that have this rare diagnosis, but there are no cures. And he has been off the air now for two years. There might have been some promos where you heard a pre-recorded um, use of his voice, but he has not been on the air for two years. And imagine what life would be like if the number one thing that you do and the number one tool you have to bring, uh, to bring your paycheck home to your family, to take care of yourself, to do the thing you love, just slowly slid away from you, and you, um, you couldn't do it anymore. He had every ability in the world to go on medical disability. He never did. He had every reason in the world to believe that this was just, um, you know, the end of his job. He is a, he is a, a talk show radio host, a, a radio personality. His voice is really all he had at that time, and he, he suddenly lost it. So... Um, but he didn't give up. And the reason he's going to be coming up here today, and Jamie, you can come up anytime you like, um, wait to the end or come up now, but um, he leads by example. So those of us who have curveballs and tough things thrown at us in life, a lot of us um, just decide to kind of hit the sidelines, and, and, um, and uh, it's hard to put in your best effort. He has put in his best effort. He, um, he delights our customers. Several people in this room believe you've heard him and, and heard his voice uh, in the last couple of weeks, even though you haven't, because his name and his personality is so great. Um, he incorporates new technology. So when his voice vanished from him, he, um, he, he started off by asking questions of legislators and people on Capitol Hill with a, uh, I think it's called a boogie board. <laughs> Here it is. And, uh, and he writes on it and uh, pushes a button and it, and it erases. And then he rewrites and asks questions. And he continued doing his job. 
he has gone on to Twitter. He's now a, a Twitter. I'm sure people in this room follow him on Twitter. He has over 150,000 followers. I think I, um, thanks to some people in this room, I think I have like 370. And, and I've got a major head start. Um, but uh, he has 150,000. He's got tens of thousands of followers on Facebook. And he continues to do a phenomenal job because his reporting is so good, he continues to type up a report and our on-air personalities will read the news and attribute it to him because their job is is made easier by the fact that he is a phenomenal reporter. So he incorporates new technology, which is another one of the, of the tenets about that, the how we get into the future. But what you don't know is he's incorporated a new technology most recently, and it's, um, it's, it's pretty mind-blowing. So uh, artificial intelligence, voice synthesis. Uh, you all have seen the movie um, about Stephen Hawking where he, he's able to type and use his eyes and, and have a computerized voice uh, present his voice. Um, Jamie and Cox Media Group had years and years of, of, of recordings of his voice. And uh, we were able to find a company uh, called Seraproc, which is a company in, uh, in Scotland, my, my homeland. I'm very uh, happy that it's in Scotland. And there's actually several companies around the world doing this, but some of them have a problem with piecing together people's voices because they don't know what this could be used for. And Seraproc, um, is one of the leaders in this technology, they were actually able to piece together the speech that John F. Kennedy was supposed to give the day after he was assassinated. That speech is on paper, and with all of his previous uh, speeches that were recorded, they were able to recreate it. And, um, and, and, and shortly thereafter, um, they did some other pilots, and they came acro across Jamie and his uh, recordings. So eight years worth of digital recordings from the internet were fed into their system, they parsed up all the words. They have an example of his use of this word and that word. And, um, and then they can synthesize it back together. So with a little bit of luck and a little bit of investment, um, we believe that Jamie's going to be back on the air, not only, not only the words but his actual voice um, in, not, in the not-too-distant future. And nobody has heard this yet. Um, but when he first found out that the technology could be done and they believed and they said, we think we can do this, they, they said, what, do you, what would you like to do? And he, um, he wrote up a, a message to his family. Um, this is where it'll take me a second. Um, his family, who hadn't heard his voice in two years, and um, he didn't know who to call first. <laughs> and he, he had to decide between his kids, his daughter, his, his wife. I said, you're, you're, there's no way to win this argument. If I pick my daughter, my wife's going to be upset. If I pick my wife, my daughter's going to be upset. But he, uh, he typed up a message and sent it to his... Um, to his eldest, his eldest daughter, uh, Liz, and, um, and she cried. And, um, and together with their family, they said, you know, we've heard Jamie's voice again. And, um, and so today, um, I wanted to uh, present this award to you, Jamie, because um, you lead by example, you inspire us, uh, you delight our customers, uh, you're using new technology to reinvent not only your job, but... Um, but yourself, and uh, you're an inspiration to me. Um, I think anybody out here would say you're an inspiration to them, and uh, I'm so happy to soon be hearing your voice again and hopefully be on the more long distant road to recovery. I know this doesn't solve all your problems, but um, it, does, it does do a lot for us, and it provides hope um, in an area where we didn't know we had any. So congratulations uh, for being a, a phenomenal person. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, I don't know how you want to do things. Uh, there is one word that I say uh, uh, very well. No. <laughs> but that is not uh, the proper uh, response. So, Mr. Taylor, I want to thank you for this award and thank you for allowing me to work for this great company for now almost 30 years in the Cox Washington News Bureau. I want to thank those people here who have helped push my career to new heights. 
and thank those who have stood by me during my health troubles of the last two years, just as when I was honored on the floor of the House of Representatives last December. I wish today could be happening under different circumstances, but I will give you my promise that whether it is with my real voice or with my computer-generated one, that I will continue to work as hard as I can to deliver the news of Washington to our readers, listeners, and viewers. Earlier this month, I was here in Atlanta for treatment at Emory University's Brain Center when my new computer voice arrived. Testing it out since then, it has been a very exciting last 10 days. Once again, thank you very much for this honor. It means a great deal to me, and thank you for giving me the chance to speak again. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you, Jamie. Um, welcome back. Uh, welcome to your voice back. It's, it's great to hear it. Um, you're, uh, you're joined today by your father, uh, Jim, and your sister, Jacqueline. Um, as I understand, your mother uh, has, has, has left us, but um, she and your father uh, met on Capitol Hill in, in uh, 1960. One of them on the right side, one of them on the left side. But uh, <laughs> it was a match made in heaven, and, um, and they, uh, they had somebody who also uh, met his wife on Capitol Hill. Um, Emily can't be with us today. She's got her hands full these days taking care of your kids, uh, Liz, Henry, and Teddy. Um, but I know she sends her love, and, um, and I know she's proud of you, just like we're proud of you. So uh, congratulations, and uh, we're going to be with you every step of the way. And anything you ever need, uh, please let us know. And uh, thank you all for, for coming out today and for honoring Jamie and these wonderful panelists. Yeah.